Hi everyone, on behalf of IUG, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar, System Manager Beginner User Experience, presented by Avaya. Thank you for participating in today's webinar and for your continued support in this IUG program. Before we begin, I have three quick housekeeping items to go over. First, today's webinar will be recorded and available for on-demand. Second, a Q&A session will follow today's presentation. All questions will need to be entered in the question window near the bottom of your GoToWebinar screen. Third, there will be a short evaluation that pops up as you exit the webinar. Please make sure to take a minute and let us know what you thought of today's session and what you might like to see going forward. Let's get started. I would now like to turn things over to you, Kevin. Thank you, Paige. Welcome everyone and thank you for the opportunity to present to you and to talk a little bit about how you manage some of your platforms for your business communications. And we'll focus particularly on an application called System Manager and the ability to allow you to use a web browser to be able to manage uh, many of your Aura components. And so you can see on this slide here, what we'll do is um, see that System Manager goes across uh, many of the platforms that you may have installed in your environment. And you can manage things like the Communication Manager, which houses many of the telephony features and is um, also housing many of the contact center capabilities as well. Uh, present services and the ability to manage uh, many of the breeze components is also a capability of System Manager. And also looking at any of the other conferencing messaging applications, we can also uh, have some integration into those back-end services as well. Session Manager is also a component that is also managed by System Manager. And then down at the bottom, we'll see that some of the other capabilities for System Manager to manage SIP users and to manage endpoints and to manage applications like session border controllers are, are functions that can also be supported here as well. If you wanted to look at this diagram in a different flavor, uh, you could also see this graphically. And graphically, we can see that System Manager is able to manage uh, many of the core elements as well as manage the users in the system and can interoperate with uh, other components like Breeze and the Session Board of Controllers, as well as any other applications that could provide uh, user functionality like SIP users for conferencing and SIP users using our Vantage devices as well. So, what we'll do now is we'll segue over to the application and then come back a little bit later with some questions and answers uh, to see how you're um, handling some of the knowledge that we're transferring. When we look at System Manager, what we see here is that it is a platform that can support many types of functionalities. And the ideal is to give you a single platform that would allow you to manage multiple systems and to manage uh, multiple capabilities within the architecture. And so these are some features and benefits that we normally highlight when we talk about System Manager and the ability to give you a single point of management with less complexity, give you better, better data consistency, and to be able to deploy faster using some of its capabilities to commit some of the translations that you're doing and also give you a lower total cost of ownership so that you can be able to do things like automation and being able to look at a single place where you can reduce the number of errors potentially done with the task. And less training should be needed. We think that the user interface is rather intuitive and hopefully you'll be able to migrate from some of our uh, other clients like Avaya Site Administration, which I'm sure many of you have a lot of knowledge and history about. Uh, we'll try to highlight what some of the differences are and capabilities are between those two platforms. And so these are, again, the value props. These are some of the things that you can see that the System Manager application can support up to 250,000 total users and quite a few of these capabilities are here and up to 250 administrator logins uh, with 50 of them being simultaneous. So the system manager does allow you to support multiple people who are managing the platform. And so uh, there are various releases. Uh, we are currently at release 8.1. And uh, depending on which release that you're on in system manager may have some of the limitations uh, and or capabilities that you may wanna um, start to deploy here. The next tab, what we'll see here is, this is um, the system manager uh, platform and the ability to be able to see a user logged into System Manager 
using the browser. And so once that user is logged in, uh, they can have things like administrative profiles. And so you can see that as I hover over things, I can open up different applications. And I can also see those applications open in a tab. And that would also make it very easy to navigate between different functions that you're doing in System Manager. The screen that we're seeing now is actually the dashboard of the server. And so what we're seeing is some of the information that the system is telling us about its resources and how it's utilizing those, how many licenses potentially may be in use, and any of the other applications that potentially it may be synchronized to. For example, synchronization to present services, communication manager, any of our device services, media servers, as well as our gateway services, and even the Avaya Breeze platform. Uh, we can also see some things like the current number of users that may be all, uh, in active environments and what licenses you may have paid for. And we can also see things like the simultaneous administrative logins that are currently being in use. Uh, we thought it would be nice also to give you some information around alarms so you can also see any potential alarms that may be going on within the server itself. And you can build these sort of of widgets and, and shortcuts uh, to be able to make it very custom so that you can be able to see what you want to see when you log in to your particular login of the application. Now what we'll look at when we see logins is we can administer users and we can administer users with certain capabilities or what we call roles-based access and control. And so here you can see in the system that we can have admin users, we can have users like myself who are briefers, we can also have um, deep dive users or system administrators that have superpowers and super user capabilities. And when we set these users up, what we can do is we can administer what they can do and the ability of handling uh, certain functionalities within the platform. And so these are, are, are another a set of key areas that the platform can support. We can also support our legacy CS1K environments and to be able to do some administration capabilities uh, from the system manager platform in this graphical user interface. And we can also manage some of our software deployment and the abilities to understand what applications need to have new software uploaded and the ability to do all of that centrally from system manager. And we can also manage any of our security as well as our roles and policies and, and be able to really make this a application that can support security and log on and, and even aging passwords and things of that nature to keep users from uh, reusing their passwords over and over year after year. And so here you can see that uh, they've established uh, a uh, user uh, ID for the briefers. We have the ability to have a role name and the description of what it can allow us to do inside of the platform. I've also opened up a tab for user management. And here's where we typically see where you can um, manage your users, build those users uh, to be able to set up new users and the ability to understand how those users are going to connect to the back office systems. And so once I'm in my user profile and I begin to add the users, I can see fields around names and logins and passwords that I can put in for those users. I can import a lot of this data uh, and the ability to be able to bring in some of this data using LDAP or Active Directory type of integrations. The next tab over is what we call the Communication Profile tab. And this is where I can understand what are the backend servers that this user is about to be assigned to and whether or not if we are going to set them up as a legacy user or even some of our IP or SIP user services can also be set up in the communication profiles here. And so these will allow the user to assign the session manager, assign any potential Breeze applications, any potential IX workplace pro profiles, and any communication manager endpoint profiles, as well as any present services. And if I start to activate a few of these, we'll see that the screens will populate to let the administrator be able to support any kind of new functions that are gonna be added for this user's profile. And we can also set up this user in an environment where they could uh, be available uh, to uh, access any public contacts. We can also look at any uh, shared addresses that they may have, 
and the ability to also understand any other um, platforms that they may be administered in. So now what we're seeing is uh, we have the communication manager endpoint profile brought up for this user. And the systems could also be identified as to which systems we're gonna manage that user. We can ask whether or not we're gonna use an existing endpoint or not. And we could also look at any kind of templates that may be established, which we'll show you here in a moment as well. Uh, we can give the user the uh, security code as well as any of their voicemail preferences. And then we can even go down here and look at the type of phone and device that uh, the user is going to receive and how we can be able to put this natively inside of this user's profile. And so these are all either drop down options or you can be able to import a lot of these functions as well. And you can also administer the extension very quickly. You can look at the next extension that's available in the um, um, DAO plan and that will start to set up that user's communication endpoint. And you can see up here in the upper left, upper right, that you can commit this and you can continue on to some other programming if you wanted to as well to set this user up. And once the um, that commit com capability is um, submitted, it starts to synchronize with the backend servers and the ability to start to put this information directly into your Aura Core environment. So a lot of functionality and, and capabilities and the ability to also um, manage multiple types of functions here. So even as we look at um, things like directory synchronization, we can also be able to integrate with the sort of uh, modern directories that are out there and help make your user import export environments a lot easier and synchronized and bi-directional as well too. Uh, the next tab over you'll see that we can see the elements of the core so being able to manage the Bree server and to see how i can manage those clusters and to be able to understand how i have activated certain snap-ins and the ability to also look at any kind of services that are set up in breeze as well as any other type of breeze workflows that i am building all of these are now capable inside of system manager as a single uh, administration platform now below there, you'll see communication manager and the ability to manage not only your UC users, but also your call center users. And so here you can see, I can manage all the way down to the agent level. I can manage my announcements. I can manage any of my routing or my tables and my variables and my vectors. Uh, all of these are now uh, something that I can do in a single centralized environment. And down below there, you can see coverage, you can see any kind of element cut throughs, and this would allow you to cut through to applications that may not natively be embedded inside of System Manager. So we'll allow you to be able to do some of those cut throughs as a part of this user interface as well. And then here you can see, I can set up my endpoints. I can also look at any kind of applications like my intra switch called detailed recording. I can manage those endpoints, I can set up my EC500 endpoints. I can also manage where those endpoints are physically located throughout our campus and the ability to start supporting those as a part of uh, having all of this in a single database. And then also down here, uh, you can see that there are things like groups. I can manage my uh, pickup groups, any kind of hunt groups, any kind of paging groups that I want to set up can all be done as well as network management for my network regions, my network routing, and capabilities to understand all of your uh, 911 capabilities that need to be done. Now that we know that Carrie's law is now fully in effect, we wanna make sure that we can support those type of calls as a part of our routing strategy. And various other components are available in the elements here. You can see my parameters, my system components are in here as well, as well as any kind of array management. And this is a new feature that came out in release 8.1 where you can actually run multiple system managers and be able to operate them as one. Uh, again, looking at more elements, you can see the CS1K server would have some of the cut through capabilities. Any of my conferencing capabilities that are set up for my users can be managed here. Device adapter is a new functionality that allows us to um, be able to bring in some of the legacy platforms from the Nortel environment and, and blend those into the Aura platform. So we can look at 
phones as well as media gateways that can be managed using our device adapter capabilities. And again, uh, these are now native applications inside of System Manager. And then uh, recently in the last couple of years, we added um, device services as an application within System, uh, within Aura. And now that can be accessed as a part of uh, System Manager. Uh, for our mid-sized users and our, our, our small business users that have a lot of IP offices that we're now um, either moving to our cloud solutions or, or would like to stay premise-based but potentially be a part of the Aura Core as a satellite location, you can now manage those users natively inside of System Manager. And so being able to have access to everything from the UC capabilities, system management capabilities, as well as voicemail, as well as any kind of uh, call flow functionalities are now fully manageable inside of System Manager. Media servers are now a part of um, many of your cores. If you've migrated from some of our traditional trunking environment or some of our traditional media server environments that are inside of our gateways or inside of our uh, DS1 resources, DSP resources. Uh, so this is where you can also manage those media services uh, inside of System Manager and to understand how your call and your media is now being routed. Uh, media Exchange is one of our former audio conferencing bridges that is now supported, uh, still supported inside of System Manager, as well as messaging. Now, many of you have a via or messaging and or uh, some of our older messaging components and and or you may have our newer messaging components, which is IX messaging, which is more of a browser based uh, user interface for admin and management, as well as the user interface for the user itself. So some of these uh, um, capabilities are not necessarily inside of System Manager at this time for IX messaging. Uh, that will be a separate application that you will be able to manage. Uh, again, your routing uh, users, uh, use, user interfaces are in here, as well as System Manager, as we saw in the diagram, is one of the key components. And then the Web Gateway is also another key component as we start to look at WebRTC and capabilities of being able to bring users in remotely uh, using that sort of um, media services. And then last but not least, we'll highlight a little bit around services. Uh, System Manager can back up and restore your databases, can also look again at your bulk type of uh, functions. So you can look at bulk uh, routing as well as bulk services going into your system managers. You can look at importing uh, information. You can look at what of your uh, imports uh, are going to be of your uh, inventory or, or routing. Are you pulling in session managers? Are you pulling in user management? Uh, information from global settings. And so a lot of bulk import and export capabilities are blended into the application. And configuration management is also functions, event management for alarms and logs. Uh, this is important to make sure that we're seeing those in the dashboard and making sure that those alarms are, are being active and, and taking um, uh, any kind of messaging to our artificial intelligence and our expert systems. And then uh, we can also support any kind of geographic redundancy. If you have a second uh, system manager, we can actually look at how the health of those secondary uh, servers are set up and uh, um, making sure that they are healthy and ready to go in case we have a failure of the primary system manager. Uh, you can also look at any kind of inventory management. You can create profiles. You can discover your endpoints. Uh, you can also look at any kind of SNMP functionalities and to be able to understand any kind of alarming and, and profiles set up for that. Again, synchronization can be done to various elements. You can synchronize to the CM systems, you can synchronize to IP offices, to the messaging platforms, to some of the unified communication management applicants, application servers, and including voicemail and CS1K and call pilot synchronization is also a capability within the platform. And uh, ultimately being able to look at any kind of uh, scheduling, licensing management, uh, also understanding how your reports can be generated. And you can generate historical reports uh, to really look at what the um, um, type of things that have been done inside of System Manager can do. And you can also schedule jobs. You know, Rather than looking at um, committing right away, you can schedule these jobs to do overnight. And when the users come in in the morning, uh, many of these functions will all be set up for their endpoints as well as their systems. And you can do a lot of those scheduling functions, I know, inside of the Avaya site administration tool as well. 
Uh, this, again, makes it easier for you to use the browser and to be able to do this potentially across multiple systems as well. Security management is important. Uh, we also try to improve our security management uh, within each release. So being able to make sure that certificates are important so that you can get those certificates issued out to the users who are coming in over uh, endpoints and applications that require certificates, and also being able to look at configuration uh, security as well. And finally, looking at any kind of shutdown uh, functionality or solution deployment. So this is a, a function that uh, allows you to update and upgrade to um, uh, new releases that are out there in the portfolio. And so you can see I can manage software on other applications and to be able to update those uh, using soft solution deployment management as well. Uh, I can also be able to see the status of what's going on with many of those upgrades and uh, potentially look at any kind of user settings and application management. So again, another very important capability embedded inside of System Manager. And then templates. Uh, these are, again, uh, the easier way to start to establish how you want to set up users. Uh, you can look at uh, templates for various platforms, including IP Office. You can also look at setting up your voicemail templates as well, how you want those call flows to be set up in those templates. And when those templates are assigned uh, to the users during the profile, it'll take on all the characteristics that you put into those given uh, templates and as a part of those services that are port supported in System Manager. And so here I can see everything from uh, templates that could be set up around Communication Manager endpoints um, and the ability to also support um, um, uh, any other type of um, user interfaces uh, like uh, call center agents, as well as um, uh, any other type of users that are set up with templates. So um, these are again, um, more services uh, that uh, we can quickly show you. So we can see here um, that we can have a template set up for um, a various system. And, and once those uh, uh, templates are set up, we can look at what's the feature server version. And we can say, um, we're, we're setting up this template on a communication manager. And when we start to look at uh, what are the uh, fields that can be inside of a template. Uh, now what we can see is that we can assign a template name and the ability to look at any kind of fields that we want to populate in this template so we can see their coverage path, their security codes, passwords. If they're set up as an agent, do we want to look at what system are they set up for? How do they answer their calls? Do we want to look at any kind of forced logout or reason codes that we want the user the agent to be set up? What's their service objectives, class restrictions, and any kind of tenant services as well as voicemail services that can be set up for the users? Again, a lot of these would be checkmarked and you would be able to see that this would be set up for this particular template. And then you can even go in and assign the skills uh, within the template to this particular agent. And it would um, uh, pull that particular template uh, in when you create your new agents or import those agents into the system. And so uh, down here, you can see you would commit this and then they would be uh, listed within the templates as one of the functions that you can be able to support. And then we can also see that the templates could support just a standard communication manager endpoint. So again, we can establish which is what's the software uh, of the core platform. Uh, we can see if there's already any default uh, um, templates that are already in place. And we can start to bring up that user's uh, set type and potentially be able to set them up. Uh, we can again establish a template name. and the ability to now see that there's a lot of UC functionality set up for this template. So again, class of service, any kind of coverage path information, any other kind of messaging capabilities. Uh, we can also, any kind, of, any kind of feature options that we wanna see set up in the template. So how the user's phone uh, will ring and whether or not if they have voicemail and extension to cellular and are they set up uh, for any kind of survivability environments? 
And then we can go down here and check off any kind of features that we want them to be able to use, including cell phone functionality, as well as video functionality could also be set up and to look at any other kind of features that would um, be system features that would set, be set up in this particular template. And you've got several other tabs here. You can look at the site data that could be set up for that template, as well as any kind of speed dials or abbreviated calling set up for them, any other kind of in, in enhanced call forwarding uh, that you would want to activate based upon internal, external, or no reply to calls, and to be able to look at different type of forwarding functions that would be set up within the template. And then if I do want to look at any kind of button assignments, I can see that those button assignments can be set up so that I can uh, be able to assign those features and to potentially uh, set that up as, um, again, a part of the template. And those feature buttons then could be uh, set up uh, common amongst all users so that when those users come to work the next day or in the morning or whenever you're bringing up a new location, uh, that template will already be established as well as all of their buttons, including any other uh, um, expansion modules that, that would support any other button assignments that would be on the expansion modules as well. And then finally, I would have any other profile settings set up for this type of users. And this profile settings would allow me to do things like uh, have uh, phone screen calling, uh, dialing options, uh, making sure I can dial on hook from my phone, I can just start pressing the buttons, uh, any kind of uh, sounds that I would want or any kind of language or I would want or any kind of present services I would want. All of these can, can again be set up within the template environment for that profile. It's quite a bit of knowledge that I'm hoping passing along to everyone. So we'll get to some of the um, Q&A here in a moment and be able to understand some of the questions that you may have around this. Uh, again, you can see, uh, you can set up your widgets, you can be able to set up any shortcuts that would be on your dashboard. Uh, all of these are, again, a part of um, being able to manage the core environment and to potentially be able to see any other applications that would be synchronized. And if I did want to um, set up a new user, or look at any other users that are in the system, I can be able to see those users in the system and potentially clone them. I can also uh, be able to uh, set them up with uh, any other kind of um, uh, templated services once I, I start to manage those users in the core and potentially be able to delete those users and being able to delete those users in a single place and then any other services that would be set up for that user would also be able to delete that user out of those environments as well. So that's primarily what we wanted to focus on um, with you all today. Uh, obviously, we've got some screen uh, sharing challenges here with the um, internet as we work with it um, in today's world. And what we want to do is um, uh, maybe look at some of your questions that maybe you may have around uh, how you are using your particular applications. And we can start to see some of those questions that could potentially be answered by, um, uh, we have um, Bob Close as part of our product management team online to answer some of those questions. And we could potentially open up the line a little bit later here for Q&A. But hopefully there's a, a lot of knowledge and information that was very useful for you and the ability to uh, be able to see this as a application that can save time, can hopefully save uh, translation uh, errors as well as uh, any kind of uh, functionality that you're trying to do for multi-tentative environments and license management environments as well, uh, and the ability to ultimately start to um, manage all of your capabilities within your, your core environment. Now, I did mention licensing, and so I very quickly was able to go to uh, that. You can see that you can manage your licenses using the web uh, licensing management homepage. You can see what licenses are installed, uh, what products are also licensed within your environment, and all of these, again, could be exported as a part of your licensing management as well, too. So um, let me see if there's... Um, uh, any opportunity for Paige to open up the bridge and gives us um, a little bit of time for Q&A and to potentially answer some deep dive questions 
uh, regarding system manager. So Paige, let me uh, open it back up to you. Um, we can't open the bridge, but questions can be answered into the question window near the bottom of their screen. Oh, okay, um, I'm sorry. We have access to that as well. It is um, right under polls. Okay. And then you can pop it out the uh, um, that little square with an arrow going up to the left hand corner next to the X. Got it. All right. Um, would it be possible to get a copy of the presentation? Yes, you will definitely be able to do that. Oh, that's quite a few attendees, 330. Would I be able to upload the presentation in here? And if you want to send it to me, I can send it to all attendees um, after the webinar. Okay, great. Sounds good. Okay, looks like there's some other questions here, maybe. In ASA, if someone has a command like CH chain station or any other, administrator cannot make the same changes. Is the same thing true for a system manager? And then what I was showing you was, um, I have a couple of different versions of System Manager. I'm showing release eight as well as a release 8.1 version. Um, let's see here, let me see if I can expand this. Okay. There we go. Okay. Looks like I can see it a little bit better. Is there a report to see how often SIP, a SIP user has had a registration of their SIP device, <clears throat> for example, their IX Workplace mobile? For example, during the last week, the user had their IX Workplace mobile registered nine times, okay? Um, I'm not sure if there's a report that, that can show that. Um, We'll see if Bob can maybe uh, follow up with <clears throat> an, an answer on that. I'll see if I can find a report to to highlight.
Yeah, it looks like in this lab system, I may not have <clears throat> a lot of data uh, populated with history to see what sort of reports that can be pulled. Yeah, there's quite a few reports that can be done. Um, I'm not sure which one of these would be particular to um, a user and understanding how often they log in. Yeah, yep. All right, so I don't have maybe access to some of the reporting here. Any other questions that I can verbally, visually see? Let me see. How do you expand some of the, the fields for viewing the questions here? I, I seem like I can't see all of them. Okay, there we go. What is Breeze? Uh, Breeze is uh, a middleware that's a part of um, the Aura platform. And uh, it allows the applications like System Manager, Session Manager to be able to send workflows to it and to be able to create what we call snap-ins where you can build unique type of use cases and workflows for contact center as well as unified communications. And so you can um, leverage this middleware to start to do things that the phone system couldn't do by itself and that uh, you start to look at trigger events from your business that could also trick off, trigger off workflows and Breeze would actually activate uh, some of the capabilities within the Aura platform based upon the workflow. So we see it as a very strong component of the Aura core and something you might want to understand a little bit more and how you can leverage it uh, for your enterprise communications during COVID-19 as well as post-COVID-19 as well as in any kind of workflows that could potentially be set up for things like tracking uh, employees and, and uh, any kind of um, other types of things that may be um, functions that would be useful. Can we use it to limit what an administrator can do? For example, only let an administrator unlock mailboxes and reset passwords. I'm not sure if we can get down to that level of granularity. Uh, we'll have to look at some of the fields that would be set up uh, in System Manager to only allow a user to do certain functions.
Is there a way to hide system manager elements, for example, IP office, as we are not a customer we're in the using in order to make the screen look less busy? Uh, those would be grayed out, uh, typically, if those elements are not licensed inside of system manager for element management. I'm not sure if we can take them off completely. What effect does system manager, what, what effect does having system manager down from a fault or for a upgrade on the peripheral devices like CM or media gateways? System manager is um, where the database is housed. And if there is any kind of failure, uh, server failure, application failure, the translations and all of the uh, information about the users in the database are sent to the session managers and the session manager, communication manager, call center, applications, media gateways, all of those, those are still able to operate. The dial plan is able to operate in the session manager and, and any of the routing um, functionality is there. And the system manager um, does not have to be online at the time that the Aura platform is in operation. So uh, it's if you have to make any changes, that's going to be the problem because uh, then you don't have any way to make any changes to any kind of vectors or announcements or anything like that by the system manager being down. But it will still operate. Um, the, the rest of the Aura core will still, uh, still operate during a failure or a fault or an upgrade. Uh, you could also um, have the secondary system manager potentially be online uh, while you do the upgrade of the primary. Did you say that Aura messaging can or cannot be managed in, in system manager? A uh, via Aura messaging uh, does have a cut through. IX messaging does not have the capability to be managed in system manager. It has its own separate web browser and administration management functionality to build that platform and to set up those users. Is there a way to change how long before system manager times out, times you out of your login? I'll let Bob answer that question. I'm not sure what that um, time frame is. I, I know that I can stay on the browser for hours at a time and and come back to my PC and it'll still be logged in. So I know that um, I don't typically get bumped out um, based upon a short period of time. Do you find system manager buggy when programming some CM elements, for example, vectors off PBX element cut through? I'm finding this across Chrome based browsers running CM and system manager 8.1. Um, I don't necessarily manage system manager on a daily basis like many of you, so probably I don't have the day-to-day -day, uh, operations that you all have. Um, so we can find out if there is some bugginess that's in there, and we would certainly recommend that you put in a trouble ticket so that we can try to isolate to see if that's uh, particular to your system or particular to your particular software load. Does the agent skill set, et cetera, here, here, et cetera, pull from the Avaya Contact Center? Um, so if I have a system manager with a, a ACC contact center and potentially a CM or CS1K at the core for the, for the telephony processing, um, does system manager see those agent skill sets in the ACC? Uh, versus looking at that same uh, user in the traditional browser for um, AACC and, and CCMM, uh, MA. Um, I, not, I don't know exactly, so we'll have to maybe test that to see if that's something that we can show um, in, a, in a potential uh, future demo for you. Is there a refresh setting in, within System Manager? I can change some ports on a few extensions and stations, and when I search for the updated changes, it was still showing the last port number and not the updated ones. Not sure why it doesn't refresh or show the updates right away. Um, I'm not sure if you can do an F5 or, or what, but um, um, not. 
again, again, I haven't tried that uh, in, in real time. Can you import an existing station as a template? Um, I uh, wouldn't know that off the top of my head. We'll have to have the product management team answer that during the, um, uh, with a, um, a response from them. Would the created communication endpoint templates be available when adding users with the managed users? Um, Yeah, available when adding users with the managed users. You know, once you commit that template, it should be within the drop-down list of your managed users as well as um, uh, you know adding new users. Um, is what I believe to be. Am I able to see users that are currently logged in, logged into our system manager? The dashboard does show. Um, number of users out of the 50 that are able to be logged on simultaneously. Um, I'm not sure if you have to go to the log to actually see which of the 50 users is actually logged in. If you're making a lot of changes in Communication Manager using System Manager, is it still best practice to run a live, to run a save all, save translations all after all of your changes. Yeah, I think uh, you would definitely be able to see uh, in the dashboard that you still have connectivity to all of the servers that you are saving translations to. And so the sync status would give you an indicator that either, um, you know, that, that last translation that you just uh, committed uh, did make it to all of the servers. Um, if there was any errors, you obviously would see that as a part of that as well. Are custom templates available to all users within the system or just the person who created it? Um, I'm not sure if there's an option to make the template private or public. That's typically what we would maybe see from that perspective. And I don't necessarily see a field. So if it's created and there's no filter um, enabled, I think that can be seen by all. That custom template should be able to be seen by all. Can you please explain how to import users in bulk? So when you're doing import elements, um, you can you can look at a file that you're trying to import uh, import import uh, import. Uh, you can also um, have set up a configuration um, and be able to import from a Active Directory or LDAP type of directory. Um, you can schedule it uh, once you you um, uh, set up your file selection and um, being able to um, actually hit a import button to start to pull that data in. You can skip matching records, you can merge matching records, you can replace matching records when it starts to input, input um, the records into the system. So it has a lot of filtering and editing capabilities within there. Is there any good documentation on how to set up a user to have restricted access? I want to give office managers the ability to manage their service hours and holiday hours. Okay, that's a good one. Um, there is online documentation within System Manager. Uh, if you go to the um, 
menu bar in the browser, there's a quite an extensive um, help uh, window, and, and you can um, be able to search on categories. You can search on uh, potential functions within uh, the platform. So uh, that sort of um, uh, capability is um, blended inside of the system manager uh, user interface. Um, I don't know if there's any best practices that are listed there. Um, so I maybe have to get some uh, some updates from the product team as to how to utilize that. Are you able to manage call handling trunk groups in System Manager 8.1? Yeah, I can see signaling groups. Um, I'm not sure where the trunk groups are actually residing, so I can't necessarily find it off of my demo platform here. But that could be something we could get um, the product management team to answer for us. One of the greatest features of ASA is that it had a great bulk change, delete, add functionality. Can you show how this is done with System Manager 8.1? Um, yeah, I was actually, let's see, I'm, I'm, I'm displaying some of the bulk features that are in the system now. Let's see if I can go back to displaying that screen. Okay, here we go. Um, in this case, I was looking at um, importing users. And you can see here, I can import a XML uh, or a uh, Excel file. Uh, I can then, again, looking at um, the matching records and merging records and replacing or deleting records as a choice. And then the ability to um, schedule it as well. Um, and then you can view the job once it's in the system as part of um, that capability as well. So I don't have any kind of file right now that I can upload um, to be able to show how that would be brought in. But this is typically where the screen would be for users, as well as any potentially global settings that you would want to bring in. I don't know how that would necessarily compare to I, uh, via site administration screens. Is System Manager 8.1 backwards compatible with other Aura products like 7.1? Session Manager 7.1. I think that's something we can get product management to answer.
Yeah, I'm looking at session manager here. I'm not sure where the API administration functions are set up here. All right, Paige, uh, there's quite a few questions here. I, I don't think I'm going to um, be able to get to all of these. Yeah, no worries. Um, I provide the Q&A uh, for you so you can follow up with whoever asked the questions after the webinar as well. Oh, OK. OK, I see now. OK, all right, good. Yeah, make sure Bob is copied on all of that, and um, then his team can probably answer 90% of those. Awesome, of course. All right, should I stop sharing? Yeah, you can stop and we can close it out. Great. All right, well, thank yeah. you to Kevin for taking the time to speak to us today. As a reminder, this webinar was recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing by the end of the day. You can find out more about the IUG webinar program by visiting iug.org slash learn. As a note, IUG's Avaya Engage 2021 call for content launched last week. You can find out more information about becoming a speaker under our events tab at www.iug.org. Please make sure to complete the short evaluation that will pop up as you exit and let us know how today's session went. Have a great rest of your day.